Being a few minutes after seven, we'll uh, call this meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Thank uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, it's unanimous. I have laryngitis, so that's probably a, probably a good thing. <laughs> uh, walk in, Ann. Gentlemen. Good evening. Ann Burbine, 10 Pennycrest Road, and also 764 Country Way. I'm here as the merchant from North Situate. Um, I was here when um, the new snow policy was talked about, and I will tell you that the merchants in North Situate shoveled themselves out. We did, and I think we did a reasonably good job. But I will also tell you that I'm not really sure that the town held up its end of the bargain in that <coughs> sidewalk, the public sidewalks, especially those sidewalks going through the intersection by the train tracks were not plowed nor were they shoveled. So that it forced people as late as when the snow melted, not until the snow melted, um, to walk into the street in order to cross the intersection, which I think is a really a public safety issue. I had emailed DPW. <laughs> I know that Vicki Sindoni, and I spoke with her today, had in fact called DPW and spoke with the secretary on Wednesday and was told they were on their way. The plow came down as far as my shop and went no further, so that the intersection was never really plowed. The other issue was, and I, I understand the ramifications, but again, it's public safety. When I went through the intersection at 6.15 Monday morning, there was three to four inches of snow in the intersection and employees at the bank stated that during the morning commute, cars could not see the lines on the street for whatever reason and ended up being trapped on the other side of the gates when the train came through. So I'm not sure what, what needs to be done here, but something so that the next time we can get things shoveled out a little bit better. Well, Al, uh, Al's on vacation this week. <coughs> We certainly will, Trisha will bring us to his attention, your concerns, uh, what you observed. It's, it, it is a public safety issue and the merchants are doing their part. The mm -hmm. other question I would have for you that, you know, we brought up, uh, Mr. Bangett brought up private ways. And as a former member of the planning board, I would ask, as you are closing the warrant this evening, mm -hmm. is there an article for the approval of street acceptance on the upcoming oh. warrant not to my knowledge and go ahead I am again not representing the planning board but as a former planner I would suggest that you might want to hold open an article for street acceptance so that some of these streets that are marginal you know they only need a couple of little things done here and there might be brought forward at town meeting so that Please. the space is there Good point, and we'll so. consider that. Thank you on both those issues. Thank you. We'll bring it to Al's attention. Thank you. And uh, again, thank you. Joe, just as a point of information, Al did submit those, Ian. They're generic, but he did it as a placeholder. Good. That, that was my intent yep. with my question. Yep, he did. You mean for the warrant? Yeah. Yeah, correct. Just as a placeholder. Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah. Good. No names attached to particular no, streets, just, just as exactly a... exactly what Ian actually said, is for yeah. sort of generic, if somebody's able and we're able to do it this annual, it's on the placeholder list. Yeah. <coughs> uh, agenda item number three is the uh, vote special mission employee status for the bylaw review committee. Just as a little background, uh, <coughs> on the bylaw review, uh, Certain members of committees in town, in order to do business with the town, for example, attorneys, engineers, people who might have uh, an occasion to come before a board or come before some committee in town, must seek special municipal employee status. In order for them to, to achieve this status, their whole committee, board, et cetera, that they serve on must be designated a special municipal employee. With having said that, the floor is yours. 
Uh, Greg Harris, 19 Bridal Lane, also chairman of the Bylaw Review Commission. On December 16th, we took a vote, uh, all members present, all members voted in favor of uh, seeking approval from, from the selectmen to, uh, to have the commission uh, essentially appoint or uh, otherwise uh, consider the Bylaw Review Commission uh, special municipal employees. And so we're here today for that reason. I, I, I have no problem with it, but wouldn't we have to do that individually, Greg? Like you and each person individually? It actually has a board. Oh, really? It's not for okay. individuals. All right. It actually has a board. <coughs> and then um, if, if the occasion arises that either myself or anyone else on the board is then uh, representing a client in, in front of any board, mm -hmm. or, uh, or if there's some sort of contract with the town, then we disclose that information uh, to the board of selectmen as well as the town clerk's office. And there's nothing about other benefits or nope. anything like that associated with it. This is just sort of a legal status thing? Exactly. It gives them okay. an opportunity to come before a board without running into a conflict of interest Great. situation. So. Outstanding. Yeah, pretty right. simple. And, and so that people understand. I mean, I talked to Greg. I talked to uh, other members of the board because I'm the liaison. And this is a status that's granted just like it's granted the zoning board and a few mm -hmm. other committees. Yep. I mean, the reality of it is is that these gentlemen are, and, and women are donating their time. And occasionally there may be somebody in an extended law firm that may be representing something. And um, otherwise, if, if they are on the board, they can't necessarily represent the, the town in, in its interest for, in this case, the bylaw review. So, and so that the audience understands, as well as the um, um, TV and land and the news, the, the, the State Ethics Commission still applies. The conflict of interest still applies. So don't think just because the town is designating a special municipal employee that it gives any benefit at all. All it does is it protects them um, as, as, as employees, shall we say, of the town in the event that they end up getting sued. So um, it's a designation that is a valid designation that's, merit uh, that's meritorious and, and, frankly, it's necessary. Otherwise, many people might say, hey, I don't want to participate on these boards. So. Um, motion? Motion, please. Sure, I'll move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the special municipal employee status of the members of the Bylaw Review Committee. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> it's unanimous. Thank you. Greg, thank you. Greg. <coughs> Happy New Year. Uh, the next is the presentation. Uh, uh, Lisa, Lisa Batoli. Thank you, Lisa. Come out if you would mind coming up and. A very interesting idea. Sit down and you. introduce yourself, if you would, and uh, tell us what your plans are. Great. Thank you. My name is Lisa Bertola. I live at 52 Elm Street, and I represent Sustainable Situate, which is a small grassroots group in Situate that tries to fill in some gaps where the go town government uh, is unable to do certain things because of money or energy or personnel or whatnot. So. You may be familiar with us in 2008. We tried to help with the Renewable Energy Committee to promote the wind turbine. 2009, we got co corporate sponsors and personal sponsors to um, donate money to pay for mass core recycling bins that were put on the beaches and in the recreational fields and in public areas so that plastic bottles <coughs> and cans could be recycled. Uh, I think it was a good move in terms of situate showing that it cared about the environment. Um, and in 2010, we have a new project that we wanted to sort of pitch to you and see what you thought. We've been uh, contacted by the Belber family. John Belber is the uh, director of education and outreach at the Holly Hill uh, Farm in Cohasset. He uh, is an organic farmer. He used to teach in the Milton school system. And he has been working with the elementary schools in situate to create community gardens on premise. Here he is with his plants. Um, and you may have read about him in the Patriot Ledger already. He's, uh, when, you, when John shows up on the school grounds, the kids literally open the windows and scream, Johnny Appleseed is here. Uh, he has a reputation, uh, a good reputation for teaching um, about producing good organic uh, food locally and his I think concern is he'll speak to this is that there aren't enough efforts locally to create fresh produce and so I don't know if, if you have kids or grandkids in the school systems but thanks to John they've had kale chips in the school cafeteria that were harvested and produced on the school grounds um, 
he's happy to work with science teachers and and uh, other uh, folks building sheds and and things to get kids invested in producing food in a healthy way and eating healthy so anyway he John and I know each other and uh, so this seems sustainable situate seemed like you know it was a good partnership so we wrote to the New England Grassroots Environmental Fund back in August and we got some money um, to help with a farm a, a plot of land that his wife Sage and his children and he have um, started uh, tilling and, and plotting and planting uh, to provide food for the food pantry on on Country Way and so far it's worked very nicely and you know it, it allows people in need to put a fresh organic potato in their Campbell soup that they're getting from the food shelter um, perhaps learn about how to use um, things like kale which you know maybe they're not so used to using um, and, and make their diet somewhat healthier um, we do this discreetly John and his family deliver the food and and we work with Betty Crowley to get input on what they like what they don't like and there's a lot of room for opportunity to improve this and maybe expand the garden so um, we just wanted to be on your radar to let you know that we were doing this and I'll let John talk more about where this is happening and uh, how it's happened and and uh, yeah, thank you John Bell I started John. a little bit late thank That's you quite all right come and bring my children who worked very hard on the garden harvesting with me I'm and sure they have huh? and, and my wife Sage who helped um, first turn the turn the land that had lied dormant for a couple of years it was started by Mr. Hurd the middle school a few years back and behind the red schoolhouse um, and behind gates yeah. I was in, in the same location there and it was a there was a garden that had um, just been lying dormant and in talking with neighbors and uh, friends and playgrounds and in the community it was really um, coming to our attention that there was um, a need at the food pantry and working at the Holly Hill Farm as I do in Cohasset I'm a Citrate resident uh, 32 First Parish Road and um, working uh, at this organic farm in Cohasset where I'm the education director and I work a lot with Citrate schools, Hingham schools, Cohasset schools and um, teaching kids about organic farming and about how plants grow and how to do it responsibly. <coughs> it seemed to make sense that in my own community I sh we should definitely be giving um, and, and helping those in need. So uh, we dug some land, turned some beds, um, put put seeds in, a lot of volunteers came to help. Then, uh, then Sustainable Situate uh, got involved. They had one of their meetings at the site there, which was very um, helpful. It was a working meeting. We, we, we turned into more beds and, and transplanted and, and, and did some harvesting. And um, We've had about um, maybe eight drop-offs from uh, the food pantry in 2008. And this past season, we had about 12 drop-offs of harvests of varying amounts. Um, I just went and got some kale tonight. It's very hardy green, and it's right there at the food pantry um, garden, at the farm pantry garden, I call it. And so it was growing there. It's still a good hardy green to be, to be uh, growing and produced. So, and Betty Crowley's been very receptive, because for um, a couple years preceding this garden plot, um, a couple of, of the different elementary schools, such as the Jenkins and the Wampatuck and the Hatherley, where we started these gardens with kids <coughs> growing the food. Um, they've already been in the habit of donating to Betty Crowley in the food pantry on Tuesdays and dropping that produce off there. So she's been very receptive and she's given great feedback on what produce is working, what not, what's not working, what the, um, uh, the clients or the participants at the food pantry are enjoying. Um, so I think it's, it's um, very helpful and, and beneficial to, uh, to those who are who are needing to go to the food pantry each week. Um, uh, the town uh, of late has also donated wood chips to help us line the path so we know where to walk. Mr. Fran Leiden has been very helpful in bringing wood chips to the, to the place there. We've gotten compost donated from Mr. Lopes over there at the um, Go Green and um, as well as, as you mentioned the Sustainable Situate and the, and the neighbors and friends of ours have just come out of their own goodwill to, to try to help. Um, I wrote a little summary uh, of the letter, which I could, um, with permission, hand in uh, as sort of a, a documentation of, of, of what we've been doing mm -hmm. up until this point. 
An another nice um, benefit just in the past is that this past spring, uh, Allison Martino, eighth grade science teacher at the Gates, brought her students out and through a uh, garden grant, a uh, Citra Garden Club grant, um, she and her eighth graders and I worked and we did lessons in the garden. And I find that um, uh, being a teacher, working with the, with the living laboratory, with the classroom, and if they're studying plant parts, then what better way to do that than in a garden? And so that's where um, we made some headway, so it's beneficial, I think, for the students. She and the, and the head of the science department uh, that time last spring uh, were very positive about, about the work being done to support the curriculum. So we always try to make sure that, that the teaching you know, coincides and, and dovetails with this, the state frameworks and the, and, and the, and the guidelines. Um, looking towards the future, uh, I think this grant is going to be tremendously helpful to help us look at some tools and the possibility of, of a shed in which to keep those tools, um, as well as some of the supplies. Um, uh, I've talked with um, uh, some people about perhaps teaching a course at the Citrate Rec Department this spring, um, which would uh, give a chance for families in, to get involved in uh, an eight-week course or so in um, learning about starting their own garden, working on this community garden with the intent that the food would be grown for those um, at the food pantry. Um, so that's a little bit about where we are now. There's a lot of possibilities for it to grow. I think it's really important for it that, that um, that uh, you know that our town can can really be helpful to to those that in need as it is um, a growing concern unfortunately um, I also hope too that um, at, at this garden behind the red schoolhouse and the other uh, community farm gardens that I mentioned where the, where the kids are working it'd be great to move the town towards um, move them away from spraying annually the um, barricade which is a um, an herbicide that is meant to kill off dandelions and um, uh, seed uh, prevention. And um, it's a very harmful synthetic chemical. That'd be great if the town could sort of move away from that. So that's another thing that we're looking for is so that we're growing this food in, in good conscience, knowing that we can be able to, to, to then harvest it and, and share it with those in the community. Yeah, John, John brings that up because he was actually at one of the gardens on the elementary school properties mm -hmm. when the spraying was occurring and he didn't know what it, I think at the time, right. what it was. There is a no pesticide um, protection, uh, as you know, for towns, but herbicides are still permitted. So there was a concern about the proximity of the garden to that spraying since the food is actually used in some of the school cafeterias and mm -hmm. by people. and. and and in general, I think on, an, on a school ground, it is a concern. But um, in terms of other concerns you may have, I don't know if you already have questions, but one of the things I thought of was water. Uh, in terms of watering, the garden last season was certainly a wet season. Um, we actually have purchased a, a, a rain barrel for collecting rainwater and use, being pretty self-sufficient in terms of the watering. We did, on occasion, I think, tap into the cemetery a little bit with a jug, very little, especially it was a wet season last year. But it, to consider a period of drought or a dry season, um, we have the rain barrel and are willing to really minimize our impact on the town resources for this garden. In my mind, the, the worst case scenario would be if every all volunteers disappeared, John disappeared. Um, at the, Worst case, you'd have to reseed a plot of land and put grass back on it, but uh, you've gained a, an amazingly organic, beautiful, rich soil because we compost. There's actually a compost bin right on, on the garden plot, and um, certainly John's brought in some great seaweed and, and other compost mm -hmm. materials, so it's become a very rich plot again. So, yeah. And very often, uh, the, the water concerns are, are lessened when um, you're using a lot of compost, and uh, forgive me if, if I'm speaking um, to the converted, but the, the, um, uh, the ground is very rich and based in nutrients, so therefore your dependence on water is not as great because the soil is feeding the plants. And the roots. But there are, there, there, there are times when, when the water is needed. And we can, the rain bells are a very sustainable mm -hmm. um, strategy. But uh, to just address one of your uh, points as far as the pesticides, uh, Kevin Cafferty of the DPW is here. I think he heard it. 
I would suggest that maybe uh, getting a hold of Kevin, sit, uh, sit down meeting with Kevin, see what the the possibilities of, of uh, Kevin Cafferty of uh, following it through and your ideas with the business <coughs> side, balance with his needs. So. Okay, absolutely. Uh, but, yeah, um, great idea. I think this is wonderful. Obviously, Sustainable Situ, it's a great group. They've done a lot of things, and I've heard of you and the work you're doing, and, and this is really good stuff. A um, couple questions. Uh, who owns the land? Does the town own the land? I believe so. Uh, when, when I first um, uh, ran by the land, I um, uh, called David Ball at the Historical Society. Yep. And he said, nothing's been done with that land. He mentioned the Mr. Hurd that I had read about a few years ago, the mayor yep. and the middle school teacher. Okay. And, um, so there had been a garden there, so I thought that'd be good. Yep. To okay. No, it's not, that sounds great. I just yep. want to make sure it's town land. Yep. And I hate to sound sort of thinking about everything that could go wrong, but that's sort of part of our job. But uh, does there have to be any signed agreement or anything with, with some organization with the town? I'm sort of asking Tricia this about allowing use just to protect you folks and to protect the town from anything that might happen. Someone steps on a rake, punctures their foot. No, liability. It's, it's town owned property, so they'd be covered. And you're working with the school system, and it's all sanctioned by them and everything like that. Correct, right? it's sanctioned by them, so, and I do it under okay. the auspices yep. of the Friends of Holly Hill Farm, right. which is the nonprofit I work for. So it's a volunteer Sounds great. liabilities covered. Okay, great. Sounds great. Thank you. Very good. My only, <clears throat> I recognize <clears throat> that you do it um, at the. Um, the old high school, shall we say, or in the uh, yes. Gates and, and also Jenkins and other. Would it be more convenient if there was a larger area of, of land that you could focus on instead of having two or three or four spots? I recognize that you're using it for educational purposes, which is absolutely very important. <coughs> um, so I, I, I understand that, you know, obviously the kids from Jenkins can't go and travel or the kids from Wampatuck or Hadley or Cushing. On the other hand, though, I, I, I like all of us, I'm sure we commend what what you're trying to accomplish and that's why I was thinking if there's a larger plot of land that could be dealt with it's town owned that could be used for this um, you know community farm agriculture I, I was thinking of the community sustainable agriculture which is a whole separate issue with private entities and, right. and trying to make a profit for, for agricultural um, individuals people who own farms and things but in your situation this is a public good mm -hmm. and using public lands and trying to do it for um, the food, food pantries is, is is fabulous. So I was thinking, Chase, if there was some town land that we could maybe designate in the future and say this is going to be used for it, would that be ben more beneficial and to work to try to make it um, beneficial for you? The, the reality of the water situation is a problem because then you get into where you're going to get the water. But you're right. If you're able to cultivate the soils mm -hmm. and make them conducive for the plants, then you could use you know the waters when it comes. And if you use the barrels, then that's great. But I, I was just um, suggesting that as an area that we could say, hey, Absolutely. this is designated. Absolutely. I mean, we're in a town where you can watch um, the farmland diminish with right. development. All over the South Shore. Yeah, you know, look yeah. at the Stevermans and you see mm -hmm. what's happening. And uh, John, I think his vision is to have more farmers, have more people right. that are invested in it and doing it right, doing it organically, doing it so that, uh, you know, there's respect for the environment as well. So to the extent that there's the possibility of a larger plot of land and many more foot soldiers to do this type of work, I think we are on board completely. Right. But, um, well, that's something we can look at. I, I only ask that because I'm like, is that something you're open to? Because Absolutely. I certainly think it would be Absolutely. beneficial and the town should look at it and, and if we can find an area, whether it's <laughs> exactly <laughs> behind here. You're and not thinking about the pachyderms, are you? Or the uh, <laughs> old common, the, uh, the right marching grounds? Right John, right here, <laughs> right out back. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank you. It's people like you that uh, you know make this town a great town that it is. Uh, anyway, I can help you. I'm sure you heard it. We're all on board. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. I've seen the garden at Jenkins School, and you know that's that's great. Just hope it doesn't come all on you. You turn around, you're the only one weeding and doing all that <laughs> stuff. Hopefully, there are enough students and and so forth that will help you. That's Many people who are uh, who are here who who might want to be named or choose not to be named so um, so have done a lot of great volunteer work and they and they like to do it quietly or they like to do it with a shout out and and I think that um that uh, hopefully it's a growing trend mm, right. unintended right. you know that's part of the reason we wanted to get on the radar because I yep. think with more um, yeah. press about it we didn't dare 
talk about this really publicly without you knowing first. So uh, if, if, if we can get more outreach, uh, we've actually already been contacted by the Rotary. They have a, uh, an ENACT program where they're trying to get kids to do more community service. One of the high school teachers in his woodworking class is willing to maybe <coughs> finish using students and considering that community service time. This could really grow. So to your point, perhaps it is a bigger, a bigger vision down the road. But for now, we'll, we'll, uh, we're very happy to just work on what we've got. Thank you. I, uh, Thank you. I think the board's, you've heard the board's enthusiasm for it. and. and uh, Thank you. Thank you. And, and Lisa, don't be a stranger. It seems like every time you come in, you come in with good ideas. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you just uh, you don't come in often enough. So you, oh, so I, don't I, be a stranger, please. Uh, I will all right. Thank, uh, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. So much Thank gets you, done Lisa. that we're not aware of. But I like you know, when you have an idea or thoughts, uh, suggestions, please. Okay. Come in. It's a deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The board to leave a, a written statement about yeah. the garden. Absolutely. Maybe the press could pick up on it too. And I would suggest a little garlic and olive oil. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, garlic and olive oil works with everything. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Neil. Good evening. Neil, how are you? The next item of the Good. agenda is, is uh, uh, inspections and ZBA, I think. Is that correct? Correct. Neil, I don't know if you brought it with you. Um, was there a? We've been asking everyone to read the just the. Oh, the yes, I yeah, the. The uh, mission statement there. Mission yeah. statement. If you would just read that before we <coughs> start, would appreciate it. Um, the mission statement of the Citroen Inspection Department is to ensure the public. <coughs> health and welfare as it relates to buildings and structures by conscientious enforcement of the state building code, gas and plumbing code, electric code, weights and measure, measures regulations, state disabilities regulations, and FEMA floodplain regulations. In addition, the inspections department is charged with enforcing the town of Citroën zoning bylaw and applicable general bylaws. Thank you. Um, in front of you, you should have the zoning board and the inspections department. Let's do the inspections first. How's that? There we go. <coughs> to open to the board, any comments on the on the objectives or the goals? And again, we said as we said last week, Neil. We understand this was a giant undertaking for all department heads. And, and, and we appreciate it. It gives us a much, much better understanding what, believe it or not, what the other department's all about, you know, you know what other departments are all about. And it'll be a lot easier next year. Yeah, it will be. It will be. That's a promise. That's, that's a promise. Um, questions from the board or any comments from the board? This is a uh, pretty large revenue source for the town. Um, we based a lot, based a lot of our budget uh, estimates on on, on uh, fees and things like that. So permits. Uh, so it's it's a very very important department. Neil, just let me start it off if I may. I guess the last couple of years, because of the economic situation. It, there hasn't been a lot of growth. <coughs> it's safe to say. That's safe to say, yes. Yeah. Do you see a, uh, any change in that in the next couple of years? Not that we're asking you to look through a crystal ball, but. Yeah, I, well, um, the, um, the, you know, the activity level is, is still right up there. I mean, we're doing over 500 permits a year. But what is down is the new, uh, new houses and, you know, certainly the, Condominiums. Um, we've got about three or four Chapter 40 Bs that are on the back burner. You know, they just had their legs cut out from under them with the downturn. Um, and who knows what's going to happen with them down the road when things start to pick up. But um, I, you know, we're 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 probably back to where we were in 2001, 2002. But we do notice a slight uptick um, from 2008. Things seem to be picking up. You know, this this is a kind of a slow period right now. 
anyway, but we did notice a, a you know, 5%, maybe 10% increase, but um, nothing to write home about, but yep, yep. It, it's still steady. Are those more like renovations, Neil? You know, like yes, people re renovations, additions. Yeah. Are they kind of like, and, and the reason why I ask is my impression is that more or less, or instead of being new construction, it tends to be like either second homes that are being converted to, shall we say, retirement homes or, or long-term homes as opposed to the cottage. I'd second. say the bulk is with additions and renovations, okay. and um, we're still getting a good number of reconstructs. Um, they're, 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 that's pretty steady where they tear down an old house and aren't going to bombing a lot. Um, but the, 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 the new construction, the new building, the spec building, that's basically flat. Um, Neil, I think you guys are doing a great job. You're understaffed, like most people in this around here, and, and, uh, the level of work you folks do is very impressive, and I, think, I always think it's been that way um, since you've, you've been doing this. And uh, I just want to commend you on that. I also like the way you put this together with Tricia and, and the, the, your presentation is good. Questions I have for you just are my edification, um, just to teach me some more. Um, how are you on enforcement, not of like inspections of, of renovations and new buildings and things, but like Someone comes in and they say they want to do something. They want to build a shed, and the shed's going to be less than 100 square feet. And then how do you – how are you handle if someone puts up a – or how do you even know if someone puts up a 120-square-foot shed or whatever the cutoff is? And the, I guess I'm trying to get at the, the follow-up and the follow-through. How does your department handle that, and is there room for, for gaining ground on enforcement? Specifically uh, on sheds? Just, I'm just using that as, a, as an example. Um, the, the, yeah, the, uh, the state building code uh, does not require a building permit for sheds under 120 yeah. square feet. Yeah. Um, the, um, but again, I'm just using that as an example. I'm just trying to think people of People come in and we things. tell them they have to abide by, comply with setbacks. Yeah. Um, and we might send them over to conservation. Yeah. I think the reality is many people probably just put sheds up. Yeah. Uh, they'll buy one at Home Depot, put it in the backyard, and we never hear about it. Right. Or know about it. Um, but um, if somebody were to complain about it, uh, we then follow through. And if the shed is not in uh, compliance, you know, we write them a letter, yeah. tell them what the setbacks were. Yeah. You know, the the um, um, we have enough stuff that comes to us. You know, really. Uh, I mean, we drive around. I see a lot of things, and yeah. you know, we'll we'll certainly enforce bylaws. You know, as we. As, as we see them, but we have enough complaints coming in, you know, in writing that, to keep us busy. Yeah. And we right now we've probably got 30 active complaints going on and really one person enforcing them. Well, that's the, that's the point. And again, I, I was just mentioning sheds as one of anything. That's just what came to the top of my head. I mean, is there revenue out there that we could be gaining if we were able to find stuff out there that's not being brought to you by neighbors and not being brought to you by anybody if, if we were able to come up yeah, with one, some enforcement one thing mechanism? We, I've done in the past year, I've kind of stepped up to sign enforcement. And yeah. um, we had stickers made up, you know, signs violation. If it's here tomorrow, you're going to be fined $25. Yeah. We've actually, you know, done a number of fines. We've gone to court on a couple of things. And, uh, of course, all these things take time. Sure. Um, and, and the signs, you know, they're like, weeds in the springtime they just yeah. crop up everywhere yeah. but you know the the um there there are some who you know i term major um offenders uh violators and you know we, we go after them yeah okay but i mean we could always do more with more money more i people. think one of the problems you face neil is that the penalties for any type of infraction or violation are are low so the, to to spend the time to try to go after the offenders, the cost to do it is is significantly higher than the benefit of, yeah. of being able to do it. And then and if it ends up in litigation, then there are further costs for the, the town, which is, you know, that's not affecting, let's put it this way, it's not denigrating the uh, the inspecting, uh, inspectional uh, department, it's just that that's a reality, you know, yeah. the costs are, yeah. are so much. So I, I, you know, I applaud what you do because obviously, 
the cost to have to go after it, whereas if, if you are going out, going around policing all this stuff, and your time's taken away from all the other uh, important inspectional aspects of the buildings and the structural issues, and making sure that the fire and the safety and the health That's you true. Know, are Zoning is probably 60, 70 percent of our work. Which what is? Zoning. Zoning. Probably 60 percent. Yeah. 60, 70. Yeah. Let me just jump in while I think of it, Neil. How about fees? That we, the fees that we charge. How are we? I know you. We're actually we're, I, we're we're looking at the the, the gas and plumbing electrical fees and uh, yeah, okay. trying to get them in line. Um, you know, our building fees are in line with other towns. Okay. Um, but that's one of your goals to look at it. Mm -hmm. I said that's one of your goals to look at it. Now that's correct. Yeah. Okay. We'll thank all, you. all the fees. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Just, Sean, anything? That was, that was my only question. Well, please. Thanks, Joe. That's, uh, that's the inspection, unless someone else has any comments. Uh, Neil's second job tonight, I guess, is to represent the ZBA. Uh, Neil, the same thing. Would you just briefly, do they have a... Uh, Six, right? Six. No, they're, they're working on it. Did they write a? I think they wrote a Pete statement. is working on it. Pete is working on a mission statement. So, okay. <laughs> Seriously. Neil, basically, if you could just tell us what the ZBA does. <clears throat> um, the ZBA. Um, well, I think the um, their their major. Um, Responsibility in the last three or four years has been to oversee Chapter 40 B. Yep. And they essentially um, have looked at and analyzed and denied permits, in some cases permitted, the largest projects that ever come down the pike in situate. And um, they do it on a very, very small budget. And I think, uh, you know, it, certain people that have been involved in it in the room know understand you know the, the magnitude of that task and they do it very very well in addition um, they issue special permits for reconstructions every single reconstruction non conforming lot in the town of situate has come in front of the zoning board of appeals um, for permission uh, they hear appeals of my decisions um, and they um, issue variances um, Thank you. Just get a in a few cases, yeah. But the, uh, the, you know, like yourselves, are a group of volunteer individuals, yeah. and you know, we're fortunate to have a uh, really good zoning board. As you said, the budget is relatively small. I don't know what it, uh, it is. Uh, any questions from the board about the ZBA? No. Neil, thank you. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Thanks very much. Neil, thank you. Um, moving right along. <coughs> Uh, disbursement from the cable trust fund. Trisha, are you going to handle that, or is Vinny going to? Um, no, this is uh, Mary submitted. Oh, this is the uh, okay. just the renewal for one of the the um, antivirus software protections for uh, just over just under twelve hundred dollars. Okay. Um, this just needs, uh, you have to sort of approve it in a vacuum because it's due. Uh, sure. We're going to probably talk about these kinds of expenses at length when I do my budget. Pretty okay. Fifth. So we need, a, we need a motion as well. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant a disbursement from the cable trust fund the amount of $1,187.50 for the semantic endpoint protection license. Second. Yep. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote. license renewal we have uh, a few weeks ago we voted probably 95 percent <coughs> of the licenses uh, that were going to be issued for the year 2010 there were a few uh, that we didn't get to so we'd like to do those tonight I'll talk to the uh, treasurer and everything's up to date and we could just vote these licenses Sure. A motion? Motion, please. Sure. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the Class 2 license for Allen's Auto Service for 2002. <coughs> Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. John. 
Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following licenses for Hatherley Golf Club, Inc. for 2010. The liquor license, common vicular's license, and the entertainment license. Second. Motion to be made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following licenses for the River Club. Liquor license, common vicular's license, and entertainment license. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. And move that the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following licenses for the Mad Fish Restaurant. Liquor license, common vicular's license, and the entertainment license. Second. <laughs> Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, vote to close the April 2010 annual town meeting warrant. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to close <coughs> the April 12, 2010 annual town meeting <coughs> warrant at 8.45 p.m. Motion to be made. Second and second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's your name. Oh, I strike that. <laughs> I'd like to move to uh, uh, modify that uh, motion to reflect that it's not 845, it is 745. Close we'll enough. Uh, there's second. a motion. Second. second on the new motion. Second. Thank you. All right. I'm looking at eight and that's, I'm saying that's 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 right. We all looked at each other. We figured <laughs> no one's going to do anything in an hour. Why not? <laughs> Can we resend? <coughs> we voted to resend the first one, and okay. Um, up, up, up. <laughs> Agenda item number nine. This is the Seawall Committee. We uh, John asked that this be postponed until tonight for uh, additional applicants. I don't believe we got any, so we'll just go forward tonight with with the uh, Seawall Committee. Mr. Murray. Sure. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, applicants, and uh, I think probably a committee of, of seven probably makes the most sense. And so I'm going to propose a slate of seven members as full members, with the remaining being appointed as associate members, because I don't want to turn away people who have expressed interest and are enthused about this important committee. So. Um, I'm going to move the Board of Selectmen <coughs> appoint James Bailey, Kathleen Crookshank, David Ball, Richard Turner, Tim Kelly, Leslie Dienel, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that name, and uh, Steve Burlow as full members and therefore also appoint as associate members Ken Conway, Russell Totman, Donald Blake, Richard Eckhouse. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Before we vote on it, I think it's important to note um, that this committee will, will be reporting to the DPW, I think to, we said, to Kevin Cafferty. And the importance of the of the uh, associate members canopy understated. This committee is going to be break, break, breaking up into smaller committees, uh, which will deal with all aspects of seawalls and situate, whether it be funding sources, condition of uh, things like that. So, I, I don't want to say an associate member is the exact same as a uh, an appointed member, but in reality. <coughs> In reality, it's, it's, it's exactly the same. So we thank all 11 uh, ladies and gentlemen for, for volunteering. Sure. No, in that uh, same vein, uh, Mr. Chair, I just ask that, um, you know, if there's a liaison, I'd like to be the liaison to this committee, if that's acceptable. You're it. Unless someone wants to. Second. Done. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Moving right along. I think uh, we, did before we vote we... on this? Did we vote on all the members yet? I didn't record a vote. I don't think All so. Right. A motion has been made. Seconded. Sean, Second. seconded. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, maybe, John, you could contact, uh, being liaison, contact, I would say Jim Bailey. 
up on uh, yep. It's either one that sent the initial letter yep. just to set up the first meeting and they can vote chairman or whatever they can do. So. Yep. All right. Happy to. Thank you if you yep. do that. Um, um, is that the end of the appointments? I think it is. Uh, Trisha. Town administrators. <coughs> waiting. Town administrator's report. Um, just briefly, the November financial trend monitoring report on expenditures and revenues is there with a brief uh, summary from me on how we're trending relative to snow and ice, um, unemployment, fire time, fire overtime. We will probably have the December um, report for your, your January meeting, pro or maybe more likely the January 19th meeting. Um, but nothing that's a significant red flag um, as far as your expenditures go, with one notable exception, which I think you're aware of, which is the unemployment account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's, that's running higher than expectations. And, um, have to revisit what I've appropriate recommended to appropriate for FY11. So, but we'll have to see how that goes. But happy to answer any questions on that for you. Um, I, I, I'm particularly pleased because, as you know, there's been several departmental reductions from the FY09 to the FY10 budget. Mm -hmm. My recommended budget reduces some line items even further. Um, but um, I think. The, o the unemployment and the fire overtime we need to keep a watch on. Um, the second piece of that is uh, which you're all aware of and is just a sort of reminder is January 5th, our your next meeting, but prior to that, 5.30 is an ethics seminar. The head of education for the State Ethics Commission is doing a seminar for municipal employees, board and committees. I've moved it from this room to GAR Hall. We'll have 30 or 40 people coming in. It should be, uh, it's a 40 minute presentation and then Q&A. So um, should be here well in advance of your meeting for the 5th if, if you want to attend. And um, today actually, it says December 30th in the report, but today is actually the compliance date for the first phase of the team that the legislative vote, legislat legislature voted uh, as far as every municipal school employee and member of a board of committee has to acknowledge that they received a summary of the new changes and that compliance deadline was today and I'm pleased to report that um, <coughs> so um, we just have to go to the next phase now which is the online testing have full compliance by April 2nd. You probably, if you attend the seminar on January 5th, we'll probably be more. There was, if I may just jump in on that, there was a, I guess I read it in the paper today, but maybe on, I don't know why I read it. Uh, the additional work that the state has put on cities and towns like ours to comply with this, this ethics uh, situation, additional work put on the, the town clerk's office, as we can see by the town administrator's office, uh, and no one pays for it. You know what I mean? The state, it's, it's a mandate, but once again, it's unfunded mandate as of right now, and it probably won't be funded. And this is just an example of how the, how the state uh, votes things <coughs> up in Beacon Hill. I mean, they have an obligation by law to, to fund all programs that they mandate, but this is just another small example of a program that they mandated and they have no intention of funding. And this happens on a, a very regular basis. So I think that's just a point, that's all. The way I put it, Joe, is I always say it's bureaucracy at its worst, justifying it, it, its own existence. Yep. It's a prime example of now pushing on to towns, which could be something that is certainly of meritorious, um, um, well, it's mer has merit. Um, but the reality is, who's paying for it? And yep. now we have to devote more time away from our own yep. town services to do it. it. You know, again, there's. It's certainly when things are are well, it's great. We can afford to do it. But 
during economic hard times. This is it's, it's a harsh thing to do and expect us to do it. Yep, but agreed. I totally agree with you on that. Agreed. Uh, go ahead, Trish. Done. Okay, uh, before we leave the town administrator, I think it's interesting to note that uh, in the town administrator's employment contract, there was a six month probationary period. And uh, I think it's very telling, uh, it's very telling that the six months came and went and no one was even aware of it. So I think that, that speaks volumes <laughs> uh, for the job we think you're doing, Trisha. And thank you very much. Thank you. I spoke to all the board and, and they all share my enthusiasm and, and thanks. Absolutely. Uh, other business. One thing, uh, Mr. Chair, is I was as I was catching up after my traveling with uh, a bunch of committees that I'm a liaison for and everything. I I spoke to Jeff Rosen, Chair of Water Resources. I think I sent you and Kim an email today about um, that committee's been doing a lot of things in the last three or four months, and they'd like to be able. Jeff would like to come in before us at our meeting on the 19th. I don't, I'm not, I don't know if the 19th is a good meeting or not, depending on what your calendar is shaping up to be, but probably for 15 minutes, 20 minutes um, to present several things that they've been doing. It's going to help lay a road map for us. I think it's a things. great idea. Um, I just don't know if that meeting's a good day or not. Uh, uh, Kim would be better able to tell us that. I think whatever meeting we have it, we might want to put him on as the last agenda item, only right. because we may very well yes, want to go into executive session. Right. Yep. Um, so maybe it wouldn't even be a, 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 an agenda right. It may be the executive session meeting. Okay. I'll check that agenda. Okay, check it out. Would you sure. agree, Mr. Murray? Uh, Part of it might be executive session, but uh, I'm not sure yet. Well, this, But it would uh, be good to have that op yeah. option. Because yeah. yeah. there's other things he wants to talk about, the modeling and some other potential okay. looking at current wells and wells on town property and things like that. I think there's some so questions on. that... that some of us would like to ask him absolutely right on ongoing uh, issues that he's been yep. dealing with. So absolutely, we'll see. We'll see. Yep, uh, that sounds great. That's it for me. John. Nope, nothing tonight, Joe. Gee, nothing, with John. <coughs> for me. Well, just briefly, I just <laughs> wanted to um, uh, <coughs> point. Um, obviously, it's it's the our last meeting of the year. Uh, it's been a great year. Um, I have to say that it's been a, a very trying year for the Board of Selectmen. I commend all my uh, fellow board members as well as Kim. Um, and I'm very pleased and happy to say that we have Tricia here. And I'm not trying to get back into saying, Tricia, oh, thank you very much. But it's the truth. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on board um, for the town. The town's very fortunate. I commend a ton of the committees, a lot of the people who've worked, uh, the school committee for working very hard. Uh, these are trying times. Uh, financially, they're very difficult, and you know I know that um, we're hearing that maybe the economy in our state is beginning to turn itself around, um, but we're not going to see that benefit probably, certainly not into the coming year, but maybe we'll see it in 2012, and um, <coughs> you know 2011. I mean, it, it is still a question, but I just want to say that you know the board works very hard. We try very hard to do the right thing. Uh, occasionally, we may end up. Um, making decisions that, um, shall we say, some people don't appreciate, but this board works very hard in trying to accom accommodate the town um, to accomplish what the town needs. Um, and so I commend all my board members, and I, I just want to say thank you. Um, also, I, on a sad note, I noticed that there was a death. Dorothy Nee, who was um, the nutrition manager for the uh, senior center and also one of the directors for Meals on Wheels recently passed, and that's a great loss. And so I commend, um, you know, sympathies to her families. Um, outside of that, um, I look forward to the new year. I think we all do, the challenges that it's going to face. And uh, like this year, there are new challenges that we didn't have in 2008. We'll have new ones in 2010. And um, I look forward to it. Thank John, you. Thank you. Uh, correspondence. Sure. Um, it gives me great pleasure to be able to say that uh, there's a letter directed to you, Mr. Chairman. It just says, Dear Mr. Norton, the trustees of the Edwin Phillips Foundation, and I'll say that again, the Edwin Phillips Foundation made a donation to the Town of Situate's Recreational Department in the amount of $5,000. Hmm. And the purpose of those funds have been specified by the foundation to be used for funding programs for children with special needs, in particular for scholarships. 
And again, I, I commend the Edwin Phillips Foundation for doing that for special needs, uh, for scholarships. Through their generosity of the trust, the Recreational Department will be able to offer scholarships to special needs children who wish to attend a, quote, all-star program, but would normally be unable to because of financial hardship. This foundation, the Edward Phillips Foundation, is a private, nonprofit, charitable trust that focuses on the needs of mentally and physically disabled children. We are very so grateful for their don donation, and that is from Kim Peters of the Recreational Department. And I commend you know, that, that organization for doing it as the board does. Um, the second uh, item for correspondence, um, this is from the Board of Health. Um, again, we're going back to the swine flu, the H1N1. There's a flu clinic, January 9th. And the public health nurse, Eileen Scotty, uh, who is a registered nurse, will conduct an H1N1 flu clinic at St. Mary's Parish Center on Saturday, January 9th, 2010, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Again, that's going to be a clinic at St. Mary's Parish on Saturday, January 9th, uh, between 10 o'clock and 2 p.m. This will be administered on a first-come, first-served basis and only offered this one day. So again, make sure you're there early. Um, the clinic will be for situate residents 10 years and older and adults of any age. For addi additional information, please call the Board of Health at 781-545, and that's 8725. So it's 545-8725. Thank that's you. It. Thank you. Uh, minutes? Move the board select and vote to accept the minutes of November 18th, 2008. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, adjournment. Move the board select and vote to adjourn the meeting at 8 o'clock p.m. Second. Exactly. Not 8.45? Right. <laughs> made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Opposed? you, folks. That is your deal. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Joe, can I have that back?